Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, more early childhood apps. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin and this is iPads in the Classroom from Tech Edge and today I want to talk about a few more apps for early childhood and the first one I want to talk about is Nearpod. Now Nearpod is actually an app that can be used at any age level and it is a way if you have a class set of iPads, it's a way to manage a lesson and work with everybody at the same pace, being able to see what each child is doing in a, on her own device and managing the lesson effectively. So you can use this at all grades, but I actually love the things they've created recently for early childhood. When we get into Nearpod, you can do a few things. You can get lessons that others have created, you can join lessons that are headed by somebody else, and you can create your own lessons. Right now, I want to focus on the way it looks when you're using a lesson. In this case, a lesson I got online. So if you want a lesson online, you go to the store, and the store is one of those names that uh, has really changed because the store has some things you can buy. So you can buy a lesson that costs 99 cents or 6.99 or something like that. But you, there are a lot of lessons that are shared by other teachers and are actually free. So you can search through, look at the grade you're teaching, or if you know of somebody that has created something, you can go there and get some uh, lessons. And again, there's a whole collection of free lessons that are available. And we're going to go to one of those. So I'm going to my library and I'm looking at the lessons I have. And we are in early childhood. So we've got a lesson here on farm animals and the sounds they make. So this is the a lesson and you can swipe through and see it but now what we're going to do is create a live session so you can see how that works so I'm pressing on live session when you go into that lesson the first thing you get is code and the code is what all the learners in that community have to put in to participate and this is crucial because that allows students to participate without having their own independent login all they do is they uh, do this and by the way you can see that you can share that code through different social media so we have somebody logging in right now so are we logged in so we have the students sh start showing up now right now for demonstration purposes we've got only one student but you can have a list as as long as you need it to and uh, you could work with the student ID but with young kids even a letter is enough or helping them log in and identifying themselves in any way, that's great. And then, once we're uh, there, we can start the lesson. So it starts here with objectives, and again, this is not a lesson I created, so this is one of those things where I've gone on the store, I found a lesson I liked. So you can see that we start with the directions, and again, the way this works is you do not share this on a large screen with everybody. Each person in the classroom, each child will have her own device and will look at it as you go along. So it changes in front of them, they don't need to look up and down, they stay focused on the device. And now we're going to meet the animals. <laughs> and this is really important, you can, if you create it yourself or if you borrow somebody else's, you can have media inside here. In this case, sound, what animal makes this sound? And so right now you've got just the sound. Kids can guess, but really where they have to do the work is right now they see a board with three options. And you can see that that's really small here and I can, uh, I can tap to enlarge. But this is what they're seeing and they're circling which ones they think it is. And once they do that and tap to uh, send it in, uh, it'll come up here. So you can see that right now, I can see the work for this student, and you can see that she marks it was a horse. She's very bright, so that's not unexpected. But that's exactly what you do. Now if you had more students here, right, 
that would show up below. So you can see how everybody is doing and you can choose who you want to talk about why they made that choice and you can choose those that did it right or did it wrong. And by the way, you can see that one of the things you can do is you can share so you can send somebody's response to everybody. So they can see uh, that student's work and if you want to show what is the appropriate response, here's one way. Now you can write on this, you can use writing, you can use uh, marking like this, you can use drawing capacity. So there are different ways to do this, but especially in early childhood, that ability to interact just by touch and by circling or marking is really, really important and makes this truly interactive in early childhood uh, environments. So we're done with this and we go to the next one and here is the answer and this is how the lesson is constructed inside Nearpod and it'll go to the next one so now it's tracing the letters uh, of the animals so here it's spelling the word horse and then they trace the letters so there's extra practice on uh, emergent literacy and letter tracing and an opportunity for students to connect the words with the pictures and the sounds. And again, it'll show up here once uh, the students are done and you can monitor exactly what they're doing. So as far as accountability and the ability to see everybody's work quickly, it's right there. And again, you can make it larger and you can share it with everybody so they can see what it's supposed to look like. So this is Nearpod. It's a great way if you've got a classroom set to share a lesson with everybody to get them to practice different skills and uh, progress as you go along. And if you have a classroom set, I really advise try to, to do something like this. It'll probably get a couple of times before kids get really comfortable using this and understanding that they don't always control everything that's happening because if they are used to iPads they're used to being in control all the time in this case you as a, a teacher have control over the device a good portion of the time so Nearpod the next one I want to briefly uh, talk about is a, an app called Farfaria and this is an app that shares books with students. You can get a subscription. It's got a subscription model and um, for $40 a year or a few dollars a month or five dollars a month you can get access to a very large number of books or you can actually choose an option where you get one free book a day so you have access to only one book so uh, multiple uses you can see that there are different topics and we're uh, looking at the preschool and I chose a book today about going back to school and you can see that there's autoplay read to me and uh, read myself very similar to other uh, reading apps and this is school glue pencil so this is a fantastic phonemic awareness book in this case and this is a great way to interact and kids explore and even um, before they start exploring the language and the literacy is making choices about what they want to read about so it's an opportunity to give them a choice once they choose that book they have to stick with it because they can't get another so it's a way to manage those expectations as well so this is called Farfaria and um, one more app that I wanted to talk about and this is um, on a totally different side is uh, Doodle Buddy. It's one that we've talked about before but I think that it's a great basic drawing app. It is free and all you have to do is really open a page, turn on that uh, this kind of pen you want and if you click on it you can change color and you can change the type so I can change it to a brush and I can draw with it, I can change the color, I can use stamps. So let's use a stamp here. Spiders. There are a lot of spiders next to my house, so I guess that's why I use spiders. A and you can add text if you want, but again, if you're working in early childhood, it'll be just mostly random letters. You can start working on uh, beginning sounds connected to letter names if kids are there. If they're not there, that's fine. Uh, but they can but don't have to activate. You can use templates to create certain shapes so you can uh, create the shape and then you can let me change to a 
and then you can fill it up, fill it in all the way and take it and then you can take that template away and that shape would remain. So that's another way to be creative and uh, to use that and you can see that you can take it up, down, around and eventually uh, you can take it off. So you can draw somewhere and the minute you start drawing somewhere else it will disappear but uh, what was the template used for stays in this case a dragonfly. So this is called Doodle Buddy and it's a great way to engage kids early and especially if they've got some time to be creative and just be on their own you can let their imaginations run wild. So today we talked about three different apps for early childhood. I really focused on Neoport because I think it's got fantastic opportunities to do more organized lessons but if you want kids to just read, explore, language and drawing uh, Farfaria and Doodle Buddy are great options as well. And I'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.